how many this was. So this was hey, 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 did you take out your oh, pension? Um, Before this asset management. Let me see your I think I need to hold a six old ball. Maternity, industrial, and survival area. Yeah, actually, everything except yeah. retirement. Yeah, yeah, except retirement. All right, You have this? Or maybe yeah. this one here. What does it The bottom is advantage asset management. Yeah. You want that? Yeah, I have that. Okay. Was that next page? Or just now? So that's, um, that's all of this, right? All this together. Yeah, it's all of this. Yeah, okay. So the wills is good. Keep doing that. Pension one. After the will, you'll have the pension one. Okay. Folks, just that your people who come to the the pick of the I drive, so I'm gonna let Pension. James reprint take that them. Out, okay? I'll take some of this. Chitney drivers came out good? Okay. So I can know which one's the print. Uh -huh. Until Oh you get to that? Yeah, you get the rest of the rest. Okay. This. Huh? No, 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 no. This, this somebody is like. Oh, okay. Cool. Okay. All right. Okay. Jeffrey right. is good, right? All right. So go away with that right now. Sickness is the one we bring again. Yeah. Sickness. Sickness. Yeah. Yeah. Sickness. Yeah. Sickness. Yeah. Sickness. 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 Funeral is fine. Benefits. Industrial benefits. Bring that again. So right after inheritance, we should do that. Oh, yeah. So just put it right there. Okay, survivors. Uh-huh. And maternity. After inheritance. Because I was feeling that inheritance. <laughs> After that, a survey of pension plans in the box. Without me. Okay. Okay. Oh, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, as they say, some I may be have to take it out more stuff. <laughs>
<laughs> what y'all laughing at? What's so funny? This yours. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what I miss? We can get this on. So let's continue with wills. Then we can move into pensions. He said mentally. Mentally. Yeah, but let us know. will still end all wills and public provisions. The classes will end. The classes will end. On your own. Yeah. You see, we don't like to set the date beforehand. Mm -hmm. Because the material change and they don't like stale data information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see the mm -hmm. So from the last time you did this, which was what four or five months ago, as you can see, mm -hmm. NIB has changed. So if I send them the same material, mm -hmm. they're gonna send an email back and ask, have there been any updates? Oh, okay. And then if I say yes, you don't have the update. Mm -hmm. So when they examine you, they'll examine you on the updated information. Okay. Okay. You see? Mm -hmm. Then the failure rate is higher. Because yes. when you pick B, it's supposed to be D. Yeah. Okay. No, I don't know I don't know I don't know the I don't know the mobile. 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 I the probate legislation. Say yes. yes. You have the Wills Act in there. You have the Inheritance Act. Um, and yes. you should have the Probate and Administration of Estates Act. No? Yes? Maybe so? Um, inheritance. Okay. I have Inheritance. I only have Inheritance. I have the I have Inheritance only. You only have inheritance, you should have the inheritance act and the wills act. Because everything you did on the last on the last class, one is for wills, then you write a will. Mm -hmm. And then we went to the formalities of writing a will. Mm -hmm. And then inheritance is when you don't write a will. Right. Yeah. She found it. She found it. She has it. Okay. No, I only have inheritance. Yeah. I only have inheritance. Yes. You saw it? Probate. Probate. No, that's the No, that's the probate. I just have the wills. No. So you want the phone again? <laughs> Do you want the probate back? Let me see. Let me see. How do you get it all the way in front of them? I don't come right. I have it. You have it? You have it. So you're missing yours. No, I'm not saying. I only have inheritance. Only inheritance. I don't have wills. Oh, right after the gazette. Okay. If you have it? Right after the one. I'm going to say official gazette. I have that. He said, he said right after. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right after the one. I'm going to say official gazette. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, she don't look like she has it. No, I think I need this whole thing again. Yeah. For real? So you need the wills act and the probate. And okay. probate. You have the inheritance. I have the inheritance. Okay. Make me look it up. Okay. 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 Ok
Yeah, it's all right. I don't think. Oh, I mean, like, she made a little thing. Oh, well, that was just, what, what year was this? Was this well, that's because this is the official visit for Hamas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I still think I need a refresher. That's why I say, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have to move like group. Yeah, I get to <laughs> this. <laughs> The yeah. They were glad of you. Okay, and James will pray. Sometimes it goes like it's yeah, muted. Yeah. Yeah. I think all. I think it's the last time I went there. No, it's all. It's almost all. I think I'm going to September. All right. So, depository of wills. People always ask when someone dies if there is some place. Um, you can go to see a person's will. Is there? The law provides now the reason before no. Uh -huh. The recent law provides for depository of wills. Uh -huh. It's a twenty-five dollar fee. A person may deposit his will to be kept in the depository, and the registrar shall cause to be recorded every will so deposited. So it's not mandatory. You no. can no, uh, but okay. it can be done. Okay. Okay. The will must be in a seal envelope which should state the name and address of the testator. The same thing for the executor, the date of the will, the name of the person who deposits the will, and the will may be withdrawn and substituted for a fee of $25. And the registrar shall record every will withdrawn whether substituted or not. So that is a new feature that we have with regard to wills. And the person who can withdraw it will then be the... Um the testator of why he's alive. You see what I mean? Oh, yes, yeah, because okay. don't forget now, or we'll take effect from death. Right. Okay. So after you die, there will be the executor. The executor but while you're living, be. it can only be, be the testator. Okay. Right. right. Got that? Good. Personal representative. This is the term used for both executives and administrators. So normally when someone dies, you normally, they normally say, who's the personal representative? That's because they're not sure if the person died with a will or without a will. Mm -hmm. If they died with a will, then they're the executor. Without a will, then they are the administrator. Okay? And there is a difference between the two mm -hmm. in terms of when their function takes effect. If you're an executor under a will, mm -hmm. it begins immediately. Upon the death of the person. person. If you're an administrator, which means a person died without a will, you have to wait until the court appoints you as the administrator. They are the person who stand in the shoes of the deceased for the purpose of dealing with his assets, and the executive is appointed by will, the administrator, by the court. So the first thing is, what were the assets of the deceased? Once you become a personal representative, you have to find out what are the assets of the deceased. And remember what I said when you actually write the will? Mm -hmm. You must be what? Over 18? So, sound, sound mind. mind. Mm -hmm. And that sound mind means that at the time you wrote the will, you should have taken into consideration all of your assets. And you must have known all of your beneficiaries. You could decide okay. not to put them there, but you must know them. And know them by name. Let me give you an example. If you call someone by a nickname and no one knows that name, mm -hmm. it can be challenged. Mm -hmm. Okay? <coughs> The assets that belong to the deceased at the time of his death come under the control of the personal representative, except jointly owned properties. It does not pass to the personal representative, but passes to the survivor. During his lifetime, the deceased may have nominated some of his property, and that passes directly to the nominee. So pension funds, life insurance, 
they passed directly. Okay, so like they would have, when they took it, they would nominate yeah. the person that goes directly. Okay. And that don't have to be listed so in your assets. Pension, no. Like okay. No. Like mm -hmm. Yeah. Some sums payable on the insurance policy may be paid directly to third parties and do not form part of the deceased estate. Because you remember now when you take a life insurance, you can say to my estate. Right. Then it becomes a part of the, all the assets. Mm -hmm. But if it's actually named to somebody, mm -hmm. it goes directly. Okay. And that's where a lot of people have disputes today. Mm -hmm. Because they're saying they were paying the insurance for mommy or auntie or whoever it is. They assumed that they were the beneficiary. Mm -hmm. But it was the other brother or the other sister or the cousin or the auntie who's the beneficiary. Mm -hmm. And so when the person died, they go ahead, they sign for all the funeral arrangements, assuming again that they are the beneficiary. Mm -hmm. And when the, when the parent die or the relative dies, they go to the insurance company and find out they're not the beneficiary. And then the beneficiary says, I'm not giving you anything. This was given to me. And relatives are stuck with a huge bill to pay. <coughs> so don't assume. Exactly. I think that he just is being nice. What do you mean? That's why. Paying for honey and uncle. They thought they they thought this game. Something they should ask. I think so. Yeah, but some but sometimes sometimes the uh, the testator the testatrix won't tell you. Let's say if they're now at a point where they can't speak. You don't know, but you just assume. That while they were living, they say, "Can you pay this for me? Can you go and pay?" They was giving you the money then to pay it, mm -hmm. and you realize I don't want it to lapse. This is being like so. So can't you, upon that person's death, I guess go to the insurance company, or they, if you're not on it, they won't tell you. Well, at least then you will know you're not on it. So the insurance company <laughs> is not obligated to pay the the um, funeral expenses. But you don't have the authority to do that. Mm. It's not yours. Yeah, so the other person would have to the other person would have to and say, well, okay, pay the insurance. Exactly. That, that would be very young bad if they know the person leaving their life insurance and they can't even bury them. Oh, that happens every day. That happens. That happens. Where's the family has come up and that happens? Property that the CCL is trustee, they do not form a part of the estate. The courts may grant to one or more, but not exceeding four executives of a deceased, um, a probate. And a probate, to apply for a probate, the following is required. The executor must, within 12 months of the death of the deceased, file a petition. So there is a time limit, 12 months. So if they don't, then everything just, they don't file for Then there's problems. What 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 is, what no. Be what, what can you do then? And not a recourse, as you remember now, when one person dies, mm -hmm. then most likelihood, mm -hmm. whoever the assets will go into the vault to, if they pass, then they also have to be probated. Mm -hmm. You see? And if within that 12 months, you're supposed to put up the claim whether there are any creditors. Mm -hmm. There may be people that they owe. And you may be accruing interest. Mm -hmm. So once a person dies, as an executor, your job is to go there and find out what do they owe? What do they own? and pay all of the expenses. Mm -hmm. And the first thing you pay is funeral expenses. Mm -hmm. And if there's insufficient funds, then you have to start selling the assets. Yeah. And the act tells you the priority, you sell it in also. Mm -hmm. But how long does it take, let's say, something like land um, to sell? It like it may take years to sell assets. Mm -hmm. and So they say file a petition in Form 1, pay the prescribed fees in support of the application, the original will in two copies, you get an affidavit of attesting to the witness, evidence of the death of the deceased, an oath from the executor, an affidavit evidencing the result of the search for any prior grant of representation, and evidence of the identity of the applicant. And when you look at the act, you'll see copies of these, the forms, actually mm -hmm. in the act. What is the wait period now? Say someone's old and disappears. Seven years. Later. Seven years to And remember now, that person reappears afterwards and you receive money later. What? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you have to wait a long time. 
longer there. <laughs> you ain't no longer have bad so money. You got the insurance. You, have you got the insurance. You got to pay back the insurance. Because mm -hmm. oh. the person is not dead. Okay. Oh, wow. But they have been That's declared dead. Exactly. Easy way to fix Yeah, but that. they're now living. But then, suppose you don't have you a job. You'll be liable. So they and need to then liable to home. Yes, huh? They need to pay that. <laughs> no, you spent it. Wow. No, but in the case of like that happened. You mean locally? No. Mm. Well, like in the States, I guess. Yeah, so. seven seven days. Days. Seven days. Seven days. I had a cousin that disappeared. Yeah, seven He's been gone about 35. Wow. Mm. I don't know whether he was insured. I don't think so. No family member said that he was insured. But I kept saying his plane disappeared between Jamaica and somewhere else. And I say, but he could be there. Mm. He could have been in prison, then come out and decide, let me just settle here and not come back. Mm. Yeah, some people just cut off because it depends on what he was doing. It was suspected that he was doing something illegal. Mm -hmm. So he probably said, you know what? Let me just cut off. He could be in Venezuela or living. You don't know. Mm -hmm. They just don't come back. Mm -hmm. So you go and file for it, and then next thing you know, he <laughs> pops up. <laughs> wow. Okay. So you know, after 35 years, you'd still have to pay it back. Yeah. Oh, still after seven years. <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought you said seven years. No, so not the seven years like you put in the team. Yeah. They show up. Right. You got to pay back that insurance money. If you uh, got okay. insurance, you got to pay back right. that insurance money. So in certain instances, the following may be required, an affidavit of delay. If you've um, passed the 12 months, the formality, you do an affidavit of delay, a power of attorney, a resolution if a trust corporation is named in a will as executor. A certificate as to grant sickness. All right, good box. Yeah. <laughs> a certificate as to grant of probate may upon application and payment of, of the prescribed fee is issued in form four. So there are different types of grant when you go for a probate. There is the straight probate, and then there's a grant of administration with or without a will. Mm -hmm. And that's limited in different ways. One could be, because there's a legal um, suit pending. One could be where the sole or surviving personal representative dies without a will leaving the fully administering of the estate of the deceased so the court will appoint someone else because you could appoint someone as an executor and before they finish they can die okay. grant limited to an action court grants a representation of administra administrator to represent the estate in proceedings grant of special administration and that's where the personal representative is abroad grant during minority of executor this is where the only person who would otherwise be entitled to a grant is a minor. So the grant of letters of, uh, letters of administration with the will annex for the use and benefit of the minor limited until that person attains the age of 18. Grant in the case of mental incapacity, where the court is satisfied that a person entitled to a grant is by reason of mental incapacity incapable of managing his affairs, the court may grant a representation for the use and benefit of that person. So it doesn't really matter that you say the person um, is not in their right mind. An attorney can make an application to the court to have the court release the funds in order to maintain that person. The pause is to the credit of the deceased. This is where some of the difficulties come with people who sign on other people's accounts. Whenever you, a relative puts you, acts, adds you as an additional person on their account, mm -hmm. most people assume that that money is theirs. The law looks at what was the purpose of putting that person on the account. Were you put there as a matter of convenience? Mm -hmm. Or were you put there because they said, if I pass, all of this is for you? And the family can challenge you. That's a recent case I, I gave my students in the class several months ago. Mm -hmm. Where 
the Privy Council cited that the wording mm -hmm. in those account opening documents mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the interpretation in the account opening documents here in the Bahamas mm -hmm. was based on Canadian law and not Bahamian law. Mm -hmm. Because it was, when I was a Commonwealth Bank in, in collections, if somebody has an account say, ah, mm -hmm. and their name is on that, and they owe us, we were taken that. Not even that. They would yeah. say all and anyone. That's it. Yeah, we didn't. It's not a part of our of the way we do business here in the Bahamas. Yeah, because the banks are Canadian. Mm -hmm. And so they interpret it according to Canadian law mm -hmm. and not Bahamian custom. So that's yeah. So what happens is if I decide I'm gonna put you on the account because I can't come to the store. So mm -hmm. I add you to the account, but it's only for convenience. It doesn't mean that I'm leaving everything to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, like most old people, they'll be like, oh, just in case something happens to me. Yeah. So, like, so, so, so for convenience, yes. Okay, okay. So you so could pay the bills, pay the bills or whatever yeah. it is, so or so get my medication. That doesn't mean so that when I die, you go there and take out all, all of my money. money. Well, the thing about it, maybe there's a they may more for all the exactly. That's what they do. Yeah, and then you can sue them. Uh, okay. mm. You can sue them. Because, because then your argument will be, it. your argument will be, you saying is yours. But I'm saying, as all the conversation I had with auntie or mommy or daddy, they said that they gave it to you because you work downtown or you worked mm -hmm. or whatever, mm -hmm. and it's for you to pay the bills. Right. Mm -hmm. But even so, most of the time you could determine and you could always right. tell, yeah. because in that case, you know what they also said? They said that the bank, the bank's representative, did not give evidence. So which means that when that person came to the teller with him, or with or without that person, they should have known by the communication between the two parties mm -hmm. what the arrangement was. You can always tell yeah. whether or not I just come with you just to get out the money. Because you turn and you say, how much you say you've been getting again? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Versus you always come by yourself and you just take out. Well, you only come after that and I be hit. So exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> in most instances, if it's not that kind of arrangement, then the poison will have a power of attorney. It states what they can withdraw against in that person's account. So the manager of a bank may, without production of a probate or letters of administration, pay $2,500 from the deceased account. You can get that automatically. That's to pay for to, to, for the beginning of the deposit for funeral expenses. Okay. And it says, appears to such manager to be entitled by law to the said sum. They don't give it to any and everybody. So normally what some people do is they bring the will with them mm -hmm. to say I am the executor and I want the funds. Or if you were the signatory, like I say, for convenience, you come and you bring the death certificate and you say, I come for the statutory amount of $2,500. That's all you can get. But it's a deposit. You see, see this is the problem now. <laughs> you cannot go and arrange a lavish funeral if you don't know how you're going to pay for it. That's true. Well, I'm sure that something Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it might be shit. And that should at least give you, I guess, if you add that, but then maybe they, I guess, they forgive you if they're supposed to be able to afford the minimum. Yeah. <laughs> no, but then you have to be realistic. Do you really want to spend twenty, thirty thousand on a funeral? Yeah. Oh, and I mean, what is yeah. that? I mean, what's the death yeah. benefit now? You get a you write it right in your flyer. It used to be 17. How much it is now? I don't know. I don't know. What happened to you? She came late. She came after you. Oh, oh, oh. I want to say because I know I gave her hug. Don't scare me. That don't be enough for no funeral. I don't even put a 10 in the little bill. But you actually believe that you're paying contribution in order to bury somebody? No, no, no. 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 Where an employee has died and is entitled to sons from his employer, whether before or at the time of his death, and the employer has in his possession a document executed by the employee under oath, identifying payment to a specified person, 
the employer may, without requiring production of probate or letters of administration, pay to the person so identified such service. So if your employer is aware that you owe people, you have standing orders in place, and there's funds there for you, they will pay. Mm -hmm. I, I am like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. Huh? <laughs> that means 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 that that means 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 they take over that. They take that. Off. So employees are working very just No, whoever's executive when they come to collect, they, they will give them an amount statement, and you you calculate that. So the personal representative of the, of the estate of the deceased person shall file a duty a duly completed return in respect of the true value of the person of the personal estate and effects of the deceased. So most people, when their personal representative, they don't like that job. Because it is, once you become a personal representative, by law, you become a fiduciary. Which means that you hold the assets belonging to the deceased in trust. And you can be sued by the family members. Within six months after the date of the grant of representation, so if a person dies without a will, the personal representative once they put in the application to be approved as the administrator, they have six months to bring in the forms saying what the person left behind. Nine months after the day of the grant of representation where the estate is in the family islands, a warrant of apprisement directing any person to ascertain the value of the personal estate of a deceased. Any person who wishes to be notified of the issue of a grant may enter a standing search for the grant by lodging a notice in Form 18. So when you go to the probate registry, they have some books and then alphabetical order. And you can look up and ask for the will or letters of administration or probate granted to anybody who died. And you can read it. Anyone? Anybody, except those that were contentious. So when I say contentious, that's persons like um, the guy that owned the pharmacy on Bay Street. The family accused other members of the family of forgery. Mm -hmm. So the mean that goes before the court. Mm -hmm. And mean expert has to come to see whether or not the signature is actually forged. Mm -hmm. That's contentious. If you have a will, by someone who's influential, owns a lot of property, mm -hmm. that will be locked. Mm -hmm. Those are contentious. But people like me and you, they're open. Anybody can read it. If there is someone who has a, a, a who dies, and you want to um, bring to the court's attention that you have outstanding bills, they have a standing bills with you. You can go there and sign in the caveat book that you have a motion. Mm. What happens with things like credit cards? Those are all debts. The bank the bank will have insurance. Yeah. First thing is where you have insurance. Yeah. And there's a lot of issue when it comes to bank and insurance. Because some people take out the insurance at the beginning, and then they do it for one year, and they don't continue it. And then when the person dies, they assume that the person has insurance, and they don't. That's mm -hmm. the bank and you have to pay for it. To get, like, um, it has to come from the estate. But that's, you have to do that. Mm -hmm. If you want to make sure, I'll tell you what happens. You, you, um, you take out a credit card, or you take out a loan. Short time, long term, 18 months. And they said, you know, they say, I'm going to borrow. You have enough 
assets and you go to my executive board, 30,000, I only need it for 18 months. Mm -hmm. I don't need no insurance, I can pay this back right away. Because whatever I do in the fall, turn over. Mm -hmm. Three months and then you die. There's no insurance. That has to come out of the liquid assets. Because the liquid assets goes first before we go to the property. You know, some banks, they got to change their policy that you pay that every month. They take escrow. Some of them. Yeah, some they're doing it now. After the issues with the with the houses, because you have a lot of people where husband and wives are in a mortgage, and they said, "Okay, husband, you pay the life insurance, we split the mortgage." He stopped paying. He dropped dead. You go to the bank. You assume it now the mortgage is going to be paid. You come to find out the mortgage will not be paid because there is no insurance. Yeah. Yes. And that happens often. That is why I see the banks are not doing escrow because what happens is that, especially if it's the female, she either may be not working or working but has children to support. He may not have left enough for her in order to do all of these things and then the house goes up for sale. So all of these things you have to think about when you're advising people. Mm -hmm. putting your, what they say, putting your house in order. What happens sometimes, you know, some people think the bank is paying the insurance. You should check. So it's up to them to check. Mm -hmm. Whenever you go into the bank. Yeah, when you go in the bank, you should say, I think I have, ins have life insurance over this loan. Can you confirm that for me, please? And sometimes you come to find out, guess what? When they, they, when they um, activated your account a couple times, it was insufficient funds, mm -hmm. it lapsed. Because mm -hmm. remember now, everything is automated. So if I know your payment. You'll find out that when you actually go, they, they'll take it out. When you actually go, to the bank, mm -hmm. yeah, that's the bill. You'll find out then that guess what? It laps. Yeah. So remember, the onus is always on you. Yeah, that's what I call work. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, I I know it's a fun thing, but it is thinking in the and I can see every every year it comes out, every month it comes out. Yeah, they should have some kind of um, confirmation because it's, in a, it's a blanket insurance. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they should have some confirmation showing you, even if they have to take the long list, mm -hmm. like how this is, and, and cut off that know. name and that name, you could see yes, and expiry date is so and so. But what happened before all the mortgage disasters is that people assumed. Mm -hmm. that it was being paid and taken right. out. Right. But if there's insufficient funds, automatically, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it will stop. It might be insufficient funds for the period where it was to come out. Yes. It could be the next day. Because you may, you may have gone and one month and said you were on show up. You took yeah. the $200. Yeah. You can forget about that afterwards. Yeah. That might have been the third or fourth month. So here we are now in month 12. Mm -hmm. You're going to take out the money to pay it. There's insufficient funds. Yeah. They try to reach you, the number in the system, is 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 all is all old number? Okay. Yeah. How much? One. one I only need one phone. Okay. Each one is just one. Okay. I see. Right. I see. That's another thing. The onus is on you. Every time you change your cell phone number and your job to let the bank know, mm -hmm. let the insurance company know, let Cable Bahamas know, let B C know. It's all on you. Yeah. yeah, but they duck and then when it comes to yes, this part of it, exactly. Yeah. So that's the key thing you have to remind Always people when you advise them. They have to ensure that all of these people have your contacts. You may have more than you need. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's mine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What? Oh, sorry, sorry. You talking about this test again? <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a blessing right now. <laughs> so an executor or administrator can be remunerated if it's stated in the will. And then the law, the act actually sets out how much they can be paid. Oh, okay. 
Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Where a personal representative of a deceased wastes or converts to its own use any part of the real or personal estate of the deceased and dies, his personal representative shall, to the extent of the available assets of the defaulter, be liable and chargeable in respect of the waste. So remember, I said once you become a personal representative, it is a fiduciary duty. And once you are a fiduciary, you, are, you cannot use the assets. Mm -hmm. For your own personal, personal use. Yeah. Okay. And all this is saying is that if you do do that, or you convert the assets, let's say you take um, cash and you bought jewelry, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you converted it. They're saying is that if you were not able to pay for that while you were living, mm -hmm. then when you die, your personal representative has to pay for that over what you left. You don't if get you can't pay when you live in where they can live, where they can pay oh, pay. You got life insurance, you got something, I don't know what you have. You got paid, you got paid your debts. Okay. <laughs> if any person without valuable consideration to the defrauding of creditors obtains, receives, or holds any real or personal estate of a deceased person or effects the release of any debt or liability due to the estate of the deceased, he shall be charged as executor in his own wrong to the extent of the real and personal estate. So what you have sometimes is that when someone dies, let's say they have a lot of property, you have a family member who goes about pretending that they are the personal representative. Mm -hmm. That happens a lot. Mm -hmm. So it says anyone without full consideration to the defrauding of creditors obtains, receives, or holds any real estate. That's why you have to be sure that the person who's representing the sale of any asset is the actual personal representative of the estate. Anyone who makes a false declaration in respect of any application, there is a fine not exceeding $5,000. And anybody who commits any offense under the act, the fine is $5,000. I hope that's a deterrence. So, so far, what have we learned from the very first class in terms of giving advice with your new designation soon to be in January with CFP behind your name? What have you learned? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> of course. But what else? What kind of advice can you give so far? Some good advice. How essential it is to prepare a will. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask you now that we've covered the will. What, what would you prefer, personal trust or what, or what would be, because we have a lot of you know, things in place, a lot of rules in place, mm -hmm. and how about will be concrete? Would okay. you, would you, would you, you I would say you, I would advise someone to put their assets within the trust if they have assets. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Let's say someone have, without calling any names, the mall, 10 condominiums, <laughs> 8 businesses. You see what I mean? Like real assets. You're talking about my stuff again, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you put it in a trust. If you have just your home, your bank account, two bank accounts, maybe three cars, maybe one apartment, and it's clear who you want to leave those couple of little things to, you write a bit of it. So your advice would be depending on what assets they have. Because it would be more expensive to do a trust, correct? Yeah, because you're going to have to pay fees. Versus a will is just a will. So it depends on what assets they have. So we learned about trust. I mean, the one thing that is, is really clear is that you really need to sit down and find out exactly. And that's what I keep what, telling what students. When you finish with this designation, depends on who your target market is. Mm -hmm. Some people want to target um, mom and pop shops. People, some of them want to target people who sell from their homes. 
mm -hmm. advise them as to what's the best way to go. Mm -hmm. Some people want to, I had some students who were in the insurance business and they took this and expanded it in terms of just selling insurance, looking at when we do pension, whether or not they should go more into annuities. Depends on their age. So there's a lot of different things you can go into depend on who you're going to target, who your audience is going to be. If you're going to go straight for the people who are like 25, you get you up in a different conversation. If you go into pre-retirement, different conversation. If you go to people already in retirement, it's a different conversation. Mm -hmm. And if you go into people who just in their 40, 45, 50, who get you ready to send children off to school, that's a different conversation. So you have to take this information, you gotta use it and tailor it, depends on your target market. But it's just it's a lot of information and you can use it without getting into trouble. And like I say, you network between each other. So if you advise, you know, someone in a bank, someone in insurance, you know exactly where to go to set up what they need. So let's talk about pensions. Everybody loves this topic. Pension planning. Who's saying, oh Lord? So I should put pensions right off the wheels, right? Yes. Small companies don't offer pension plan. Mm -hmm. It's prepare for retirement. A lot of people find out that they've been on a job 30, 40 years, work into a very, very small company, mm -hmm. and come to realize they have no pension. Mm -hmm. The only thing they're going to get is what NIB gives them. Mm -hmm. So go to your NIB sheets now and see what you get when you make minimum wage when you retire. And then you won't be so hard on the people. <laughs> when they're standing outside BOB waiting for their money. Mm -hmm. You got yours to get it yet. Oh, no. Lord, did you get, you get mixed up? Yeah, these two girls. Just say sickness. I don't know. He redid them, you know. You have sickness, it's two page, unemployment, funeral. Industrial survivor. And self-employed, yes. Oh, got it? Uh-huh. Yes. That's just a sheet by itself now. Yeah, this is the one that, that we were saying all the time. And then yeah. Yeah. That one that says retirement benefit, yes. I call NIB and no one could read it for me. Okay. Yeah. They couldn't tell me how to read this. Okay. Okay. Oh, it depends on how much So, let me tell you a key thing now for NIB. What you need to do, which behemoths don't do, is during the course of your employment, you go to NIB for two things. One, to make sure your contributions are being paid. Two, to have an idea as to how much your contribution, how much you will be paid when you retire. Three, when should you retire? Realize that after you reach retirement age, which is 65, and you continue working, and your spouse has died, you won't get that spousal benefit. If you're working. If you're working. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of little, little things you need to find out prior to. You can't ask these things 
during the actual event because they're gonna they they're gonna need to have to know before. Mm -hmm. So you need to ask these questions because I know someone who retired, right? Was working, not not the regular job they were in before, but they caught like a part time job as a retiree, mm -hmm. and they applied for the survivor's benefit. Exactly, and they worked for over ten years. I couldn't get it. So these ones are the old ones? Yeah, seriously. What? Yeah, because they said that the writing was cut off. Yeah, it's a matter of time. Yeah. I don't have retirement benefit. How come? That was in the first package. Yes, you do. It's the last page. It's oh, yeah. It's okay. To qualify for the monthly paid benefit, you must have made at least 500 contributions. Retirement? And is age 60 to 64 retired from gainful employment? This is not spot employment. Gainful employment. Or if still working, is not earning more than half of the insurable wages. You see what I tell you is not straightforward. Or age 65 or older. Now you can get early retirement, and that's why you need to ask, because early retirement reduces drastically. Yeah. 8% per year. Yeah, it's a lot. So it's best to wait until it's actually it's retirement. Real, it's a real follow I've been down there. Yeah. That happened to my mom. She took early, and it was a bad idea. Bad idea. She didn't ask. Mm -hmm. She signed it, and then she told us a couple of years later. Wow. Not a good idea. Late retirement, persons who delay claiming the benefit until after age 65 get increased payments assessed as a percentage of what they would have gotten had they claimed at age 65. Increased rates based on the number of months a claimant is older than his or her 65th birthday up to age 70 years. So you get increased rates between 65 and 70. Then they tell you how it's calculated. Two factors are used to determine the dollar amount of retirement benefit. First, the average insured income on which contributions were paid and are credited must be determined. As of July 1st, 2012, the highest five years of insurable earnings over the work life are used. For pensionable civil servants, insurable earnings for retirement and other pensions will still be affected by the previous $110 per week ceiling and will result in a weighted average assessment. But that's what I'm saying. You have to go to NIB. On retirement benefit. Oh, second page. Second page. Second page. Oh, okay. I think no one can read that. I can't tell you how that works. Okay. Right here. Question for you. Uh huh. Uh, <laughs> employees, employers decide the insurable amount. Uh huh. It's set. Go to the sheet. It's set. They can't decide that for you. Based on your salary. There's a minimum. There's a minimum. There's a, there, there is a maximum. There's a ceiling. But see, that's so, what I'm saying. In my, in my particular case, mm -hmm. I know that the employer has ensured the maximum. Mm -hmm. Because where I work. I remember when you were saying that yes. you, someone told you that you could go and put extra. Yes. Ask NID, they said no. There's some, but there's something with the amount because that my employer pays national insurance for the employees. Mm -hmm. It's a benefit. Mm -hmm. And so. So they're paying the total 9.8%. Whatever that high, whatever that high end is, that they that's pay, right here. That's what, they, that's what they have done. So uh -huh. they, have, they have done the. They're paying the 2903. That's right. what they pay for you. Right. That's the ceiling. Mm -hmm. Can't go over that. But can you pay less than that? Yeah. If you if earn, earn less, less than that. Earn less. Only mm -hmm. if you earn less. You could you could actually be um 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 fine for that. Because don't forget when it goes to NIB, it has your num your name, mm -hmm. your number, and your salary. Mm -hmm. If they pay less than that, when you go to claim, you can get less money. I can see you outside 
on Sugar Street. You no, know, but like I said, whatever the high end is, whatever this it is. is it. And then it changes over time. And you see? That's, what, that's, what that's why I like to show you this. See how it has increased over time. This is where we are now, 2903. Now, when you say when it goes to national insurance, it has your salary, what do you mean? The ceiling. Oh, the ceiling, ceiling. Yes. yes. Okay. You don't put the whole thing. Yeah, just yeah. the ceiling. Okay, uh -huh. all right. Yeah. The ceiling. Okay, so my, I guess, so my question is, if I'm an employed person, they said they're paying 3.9%. That's you. That's you me. And your employer you pays 5.9%. Uh-huh. And we can't go over 9.8%. 9 9 9 and then these are your ceilings. Okay. This is the total amount. That's me. Yeah, yeah, no, you ain't getting the ceiling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I just explained that to you. What ceiling you getting? No, 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 no. I had a question for you. Wow. Not the ceiling. See, oh, it gosh. tells you how benefit is calculated. And the contributions you made. Uh -huh. From this earlier report, they're saying that the fund is in some kind of trouble. Yes, we're going to talk about that. Okay. okay. I was unable to print the report for you because it's huge. The problem we're having with NIV is there isn't much money left in the fund. The fund will be depleted very soon. Mm -hmm. And the actuary over the last three, no more, five, six years has asked for these rates to go up to get more money into the fund. So when you look at the, the, the composition of persons collecting NIV, Look at how many of these things I've given you. What do you have? Sickness? Mm -hmm. What else you have? Industrial? Mm -hmm. What else you have? Maternity? Maternity. What else you get? Survivors? Mm -hmm. All of those have to be paid. And they are different from retirees. Mm -hmm. And if these persons, and in certain instances, where there are persons who haven't contributed as much as you and I, mm -hmm. they're all coming out of the same pot. All of them. But NHI is coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what this is now, right? So in my in my um, presentation, I just give you an overview of how many insurance companies we have, because tied in with pension funds, most pension funds are actually managed by insurance companies or by other portfolio mutual funds. So the two types of pension, defined benefit plan and defined contribution plus. Defined benefit plan, the employer specifies the payment lump sum on retirement. It is predetermined by a formula based on the employee's earning history how long you've worked for them, rather than directly on the individual investment return. So the first thing is, you, if you work for someone who has a pension plan, you need to find out how the pension plan works. Because you need to find out whether or not you need to stay there for the long term, or you just need to stay there until you're vested. Yeah, but some people, you find out, it depends on where you work. Some places when you stay where they invest it, it depends on whether or not the company itself is a public entity or a private entity. Because if it's public, then the, the shares in the company is making money. And if you have the option to invest in those shares along with your pension plan, you get more money than working to a company that has a plain pension plan. You get more money. So there's another thing you have to think about when you're looking for a job. It's your salary. Everybody runs for high vacation. Mm -hmm. But the key thing you have to look at is once you get a job, you have to think about retirement. Mm -hmm. What am I going to get at the end? Because that's key. Because you could work, work, and work, but as you work, you change your lifestyle based on what you make. Mm -hmm. And then when you retire, you realize, guess what? I stayed on this job 20, 25 years but this is all I'm going to get. And you haven't saved. And then you have to downsize heavily. All the children must have to come home so you can split all the bills. <laughs> no, these are things seriously you have to think about. When you're advising people, no, you cannot. 
Yeah. And I beat Yama Peta. That feels so jacked. Yeah, they draw the ball. So, a few large institutions continue to maintain defined benefit plans. Individuals covered by these types of arrangements represented just 13.1% of the overall private pension participants. Defined benefit. What do you say? Wait. Your face is looking at you, Why? Of overall private pension participants and 37.2% of total pension assets. So if you look in your binder, I gave you all the last pension survey that they did. You see how long ago that was? It's in your binder. It's been quite a while. So I know they're going to have one very soon. No, not that. And you have it? Yeah, this thing here. See where you are. And this looks like it right here. Pension. I just saw it in your thing. Yeah. Yeah. Back here. You're right here. So that's that. You should have something that's else on pension. Okay. Right there. Oh, yeah. That's right it. Here. Yeah. Got it? Uh -huh. Oh. Central Park. Central yes. that once you retire, mm -hmm. you have your pension from your employer, and then you supplement that with NIV. Right. So if you own a job that has no pension, mm -hmm. and you have no savings, the only thing you're left with is NIV. Oh, sure. Okay. 
So once the plan and the employer are solvent, the fluctuation in interest rates or the financial markets, your pension money will be coming in. So most pension plans every, I think it's June and July, they have a inflation rate adjustment. 1%, 0.5%, 1.5% for when you retire. So this, it goes up every year by a small amount to adjust for inflation. So they said in some cases, pension plans are indexed to the consumer price index to address inflation. And this is carried out every two years. So the, uh, like I said, if you have a plan, a pension plan, you need to read it. Because you're contributing contribution. contribution but you need to know when you retire, mm -hmm. what happens. Because you have some pension plan says that when you retire, they give you half and then pay you monthly. Mm -hmm. and most people now, employers, they find out that pension plans are too costly. Mm -hmm. So they attract people with pension plans, but now they have to change the plan. Mm -hmm. They no longer want to pay monthly amounts. So and go through that adjustment. Just they just want to give you a lump, lump sum, sum and yeah. let you go. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you take your lump sum, you go on five mm -hmm. pieces, so you finish. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know, show you street again. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Because this is an opportunity for you all now because the pen, all, most of the private pension plans are changing now. Mm -hmm. Most of them kick in next year, 2019, and going forward, mm -hmm. they all do a lump sum. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to advise people how, how, how to manage that money. Okay. And we'll do something on the board in a minute. Because you have to put yourself, I normally tell students you need to map out like a questionnaire mm -hmm. or a planner as to how you're going to advise someone who's going to retire. Income versus expenses. Mm -hmm. yes. How do you answer this question on redundancy as far as paying off the mortgage versus not paying the mortgage? It depends on how far you are. Not on the amount of the mortgage? Yeah, the balance. Yeah, the balance. And tie into that is the how soon will it take for you to get another job? Because a lot of people that got redundancy packages just paid off their mortgage, bought a brand new car, and they broke. Bought a brand new car? Yeah, <laughs> they do. They, have the they do. They have the money. They have the money. And I've always been buying a second car to be able to look for a job, job. And, they, and, and they don't want the old car that they had before because they want to yeah, show that they're like prosperous. They like they will be car. They go and they buy a Mercedes car. that is high maintenance yes. rather than buying, uh, you could buy it new, mm -hmm. but you buy a regular car that's low maintenance. Mm -hmm. It's the opposite. So these, this is the kind of advice you have to give people. I see a lot of people behaving to that. They buy a Mercedes. How are you going to maintain it? No, it is not. How old is it? How old is it? It's brand new one. The parts for it is the maintenance there. The maintenance is definitely. Oh, it's new. Yeah. Oh, it's new? Yeah. Wait a little later. Yeah, yeah, she said, right? Yeah. She says four years old. So you retire so at 65, right? Uh -huh. And that's your retirement car. So now let us tell us when you get 70. <laughs> oh, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you see, you know, that's what I'm saying. Most cars in the first four to five years, they're brand new. Yeah. 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 You see that, man? Most cars in the first four to five years, they'll run smooth. After that, ah, you can pay some long dollars. Mm -hmm. OK? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, retirement planning. You cannot access the principal and the pension plan. You receive monthly payments. If you are facing financial difficulties, it is prudent to have other funds available to cover those costs. Most persons upon retiring use these funds to pay for their health, dental, and other medical expenses with the employer. That's another issue you have to look at when you retire. Yes. The company would have been paying for it. Mm 
Now you have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. And in most instances, depends on your salary, the pension, plus something from NID or your children pays for your insurance. It is very high. Oh yeah. It's very high. So that's another advice we have to look at when we go on the board to advise someone who is between the ages of 65 and 70. We're going to do two. 65 and 70, and we look at someone between 35 and 40. And how are you going to advise them? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, before you retire. Yeah, it's another thing you have to think about too. Before, if you, if you, if you, if you're talking to someone pre-retiring from just before 60, so say age 55 to 60, they should start doing all of their medicals. See what procedures you need done to get that coverage. You have to. There are some plans where at any age, you can split up to 50% of pension income with your spouse or partner, which may provide significant tax savings. Some people do that in other parts of the world. They'll split it. An employee may wish to ask the following questions. How much pension income will I receive before and after I turn 65? Is the pension indexed to inflation? How much will my surviving spouse or partner be entitled to? That's a question you need to ask. Because everybody don't have a spouse. Everybody don't have a spouse. <laughs> Some people have partners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? And we have no laws for partners. That's just what they're saying. Mm -hmm. yeah, no so those, but, we, but we, we do have people who have partners. Think about it. Okay, so they could just name their so partners name as, as a benefit there. That's, that's what you mean. Yeah. Because legally, the partner right. doesn't have any rights to come to say. They have rights. Not that right. Okay. Are there other benefits I can keep regardless of pension decision? And are these available to my family too? Because you have to think about the family aspect of it also. And mm -hmm. not just you when you retire. And a lot of people what they do is they mortgage their house pre retirement. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. They Why? take out another mortgage, you mean like a second mortgage? Children, they have three oh, or four yeah, children to school, that send them yeah, off to school. Off the school. Yes. And they have mortgages. Yes. So the last one is finished. And so you, you've already remortgaged, remortgaged, remortgaged. You have 10 more years, and now you are 60, 61. Well, we have 10 more years. get that. How do you get it? Because they make a big salary. Mm -hmm. In their profession, they get the it. Professions. What I'm saying is, that's another thing you have to look at. Yeah, yeah, depends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like doctors, lawyers. Like doctors, doctors and like lawyers and all of those. The, the and then they yeah. see that's when the strokes mm -hmm. kick in. Mm -hmm. You notice the amount of strokes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that pressure. Because you have these mounting bills and you're near retirement and you can't retire. You're still mm -hmm. wicked. And you're working just as hard as when you first started working. And you're working harder with these guys. Yeah. So I put the results in here of the pension survey, but I know you're going to read a whole lot of it. Diligent students. So we get it. I mean, we get it. You can get it. You have plenty of time to read. That's right. All over Christmas. Being in time. Small companies, I told you this before, no desire for passing to establish pension scheme. And then self-employed persons usually have no formal retirement plans. That's another market you can target. Self-employed persons. You need to encourage them to establish a retirement plan. So that could be an annuity, that could be an insurance, but it has cash value. But you have, you have to be able to advise these people to look out for what's in their best interest. So they're not all on Shirley Street over the place, hand and out their hand. Because sometimes when you hear these people's story, they had good jobs. Mm -hmm. They just didn't plan for the future. Mm -hmm. And some people think that they're going to die at the age of 60. And now he they're still here. So you, you, can't, you, don't, you, you can't foresee it. So you have to plan. Yes. 
CFD, but who, who, who are doing in the ladies here besides, I guess, overall fidelity and CFA? More insurance companies are Insurance companies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the NIB, Nationally Insurance Board, because remember that supplements your NIB. In 2016, the reserve stood at 1.518 billion, down from 1.586 at the end of 2015. That's not much. Not bad. But what is that telling you? If you go on go on the NIB website, and I want you to look at the last year's report, and you'll see how much they paid out in each one of these categories. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's in the past. So some of my classes before we discussed that. No. You mean for um, the low cost housing and stuff here? But that's before. That's not now. That's a different issue. Mm -hmm. That's the part of that unrealized law. <laughs> <laughs> they just need to realize it now. <laughs> <laughs> so the NIB funds remain heavily invested in the public sector. They have it in government of the Bahamas debt, finance leases, equity, securities, CDs, bonds, T-bills, and treasury notes. Investments held internationally declined slightly by 4% of the portfolio for 2016. However, projection that the reserves will be completed completely depleted between 2028 and 2033, wow. unless we increase. So That's right here. Yeah, right so here. all of these people here. Oh, we get them again. Not feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to feel. Wow. You can go with them. See, fine, and then we'll put mm -hmm. you in there. My oldest son. Congratulations. He'll be paying. <laughs> For us. Mm -hmm. They'll think of something over the next two years. A ninth actual um, report from NIB. It's required contributions from all employers and workers with two or more jobs so that future benefits can be based on their regular combined insurable wages. This is what they're saying. If you have two jobs, then you need to pay NIB on both. So we can try to get more money in. Oh, because it used to be if you just, you didn't have to pay just right. the main one. So Devise a more simple and attractive means by which self-employed persons can contribute. Because that's one of the biggest things NIB is working on now, self-employed persons, getting them to contribute. Because what happens is when they get sick, then they come to NIB looking for benefits, but they haven't made any contributions. To enhance benefit adequacy for unemployment benefit, remove the condition that defers its payment by the number of weeks of redundancy payments received. For survivor's benefit, clarify and possibly revise the rules regarding eligibility of widows or widower over age 40 who have no eligible children. For pensionable civil servants, revise the method used to calculate average insurable wages for pensions so that it will take less than 40 years to obtain the maximum benefit once they start contributing on full insurable wages in 2013. Contribution rates are more than doubled. At current contributions and payout level, NIB will not be able to meet your share of benefits in the future unless the pension system is reformed. Sorry to think. Mm -hmm. So can you live up $268 per month? Mm -hmm. Wow. A lot of people are being forced. That's where it is now? Yeah. It's not much. No. No. But that's why I say when you see, when you see an elderly person in the store, Sometimes when you see them in the bag digging and digging and digging for 50 cents, 75 cents, and I'm a dollar, in most, in most instances that they don't have the, what the thing is, the support from social services, that's all the so cash they have. Is from government? Because I know it's from government. Um, NIV, from government. I know, but they received pension and NIV. Only if they yeah, were an had an employee who had a pension plan. Uh, okay. And if the pension plan was lump sum, that money is long gone. No, I mean, pension they didn't from national it. insurance, that's what I mean. No, national insurance is national insurance. You know, it's come twice a month. One has come two days before government pay day, and then one is big like around the seven days. No, it's only going to get one by one. Oh, uh, okay. So I know some persons, you know, it's okay. Big. okay, you see all of these benefits here? Mm -hmm. It could be any one of them. Uh, okay. And they're paid at different times. Mm -hmm. So the pensioners are paid on a particular date. Mm -hmm. If you are one that is getting, um, what do you call it? The one where you have, where you have incapacity. 
Like a disability, but that's a different day. What about persons who did not contribute? Huh? Pension and NIV? Yeah, most people get a pension and NIV, like the older persons now. No, yeah, because they're already um, um, retired. Okay. So they're getting oh, okay. pension, yes, so pension and they're getting NIB, oh, okay. yes. But one is coming from NIB and then one is coming from the yeah, employer. Uh -huh. oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Not the two. Right. And if, but if they work for government, yeah, for, if they work for government, they'll be getting the pension from government and the NIB. Mm -hmm. yeah. They have a lot of consultants all around the world. They get mm -hmm. both. Mm -hmm. What about persons who didn't contribute? They still get the minimum. Mm -hmm. What? What's the minimum? No, 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 don't work like that. I know it doesn't work like that. <laughs> I mean, it should. Yeah. yeah. That's why no, 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 don't be mean. mean. Exactly. <laughs> it's my turn. I can't get that because you have to give you mine. Yes. <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> so, okay, so let's go to our handouts instead of reading this. What do we get for maternity? <laughs> you got paid? <laughs> no, uh, some people, some employers have paid them. Of the eight weeks, I think. Did you say some experience? <laughs> yeah, we have customers who go on maternity leave with bills, you know. And not his question. Like you know, you know, <laughs> still she thought like that was the first one. That's not sound, right? Big experience. Same thing. Yeah, customers. <laughs> How much we get? For maternity? One guy gave me $465. That's $465. Mm-hmm. That's $40. That's it. I know you see like $400. $465. But that's for the week? No, no, no. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. oh, the one time. In addition, you yeah. still get something. You have the weekly thing. That's the one with the live birth or something. Yeah, yes, yes. Okay. yes. It's 480. 485. 465. 465 on here. Huh? Oh, they well, they didn't change this. Yeah, so they gave 480. 480. Okay. I think it's 490 now, actually. When I had um, my son, it was 480, and then like two months later, they increased it. I think it's 490. But this, you are just an after 24 kids? Yeah. Okay. She said she just had I just one. had one. Oh, okay, okay. I'm just saying it's kind of good. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. I have a book from February, and I got 480. They gave year? me a book. Oh, okay. I'm trying to see the rest of this book they gave me. <laughs> Oh, but now the book might not be updated. I'm trying to see now. They tell me this is the latest, but they take long to do every day. Mm -hmm. No, they don't have that figure in here. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. they have what we have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What does that say? What, 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 yeah. what, what, no. what is the date of that book? This is the book they give employers. That came straight from their website. Mm -hmm. So they haven't changed it. They don't look big in this one. And guess what? <laughs> it would have updated in 2016. Because every time we update, we they update our um, the ceiling. Don't they update like all of those benefits? Increase all those benefits? No. No? Uh -uh. Oh, okay. Uh -uh. Only the pension thing, man. Mm -hmm. Okay. They don't all just automatically just go up. No. Okay. We'd be broke. Yeah, but like, increasing all of that. But you know what is so surprising is that a lot of people have children not to get this benefit, is to get social services. Because there's a requirement to get this. Yeah. Not you. You wake in. You wake in. Because it's say here to qualify, because a lot of them don't can't qualify, they don't work. Qualify, a woman must satisfy two contribution conditions. She must have paid at least 50 contributions into the NIB program since it started in 1974, and she must have paid or has been credited with at least 26 contributions in the 40 weeks immediately before the week in which she either stops work or has the baby, or 26 contributions in the immediate preceding contribution year. So a lot of young girls don't qualify for this. So instead, they apply for social services. Okay. 
self-employed persons. This is the market that you need to, to target. No, you do? If you're giving someone advice and they're self-employed, all of these um, um, tow truck drivers and all those other people who have, in, uh, yeah, who have those small businesses, these are the people you need to advise. And there's an actual form that needs to be completed. See it on the thing? Up? There's a form. Mm -hmm. A C-10 mm -hmm. form. And a lot, I'll tell you now, and a lot of them, when they go to NIV, their first cry is, we can't, we don't know how to complete a form, or we don't know how to use a computer. So you have lots of opportunities to help people mm. in putting these things together. So that's a market. Mm -hmm. Industrial benefits. Mm. People like the milk, this one. I see people still wearing crutches after 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. Mm -hmm. It happens in, out, out of or in the course of employment. And what people don't understand is that the more you get from NIV for these things, the less there is going forward. So you, you know you're healed. You know you only have to make a small limp, but you still want to keep getting NIV benefit. And that's what's going to happen. And they say, you can't tell me that I'm, I'm still sick. But you're not. They can say with the, the, like the unemployment and all of that, um, it takes away from the national insurance. Mm -hmm. You're getting benefits. Injury benefit is a weekly payment made to an employed or self-employed person who suffers a job-related injury or contracts a job-related disease. And as a result of that injury or disease, is unable to work. It is paid at a weekly rate of 66 and two thirds of the worker's average insured income. And there are no contribution conditions to satisfy for the award of injury benefit. Because of course, you have to be employed or a self-employed person registered with NIV. Then they have disablement benefit. It's paid to a worker who suffers a permanent loss of physical or mental faculty as a result of a job-related accident or disease. The loss is medically determined by comparing the specific loss of ability with the ability of a normal healthy person of the same age and sex. The loss is then expressed as a percentage from 1 to 100. And disablement is paid as follows. An assessment of 1 to 24 percent is paid as a one-time grant. $100 is paid for each percent of disablement. An assessment of 25% or more is paid as a monthly pension, plus a one-time grant. The grant is $500 for disabled assessed at, at between 25 and 20, at 66% and $1,000 for disablement assessed from 67 to 100%. And that ain't much money either. Sound like I can tell them you're ready to pay more money. <laughs> yes? Unemployment benefit. Unemployment benefit is a payment made to eligible insured persons who are unemployed but actively looking for employment. Full sentence, full stop. That's the caveat <laughs> to everything. When you go for, for unemployment benefit. You see those key words? Eligible, el eligible, and actively looking. And how do I get evidence that you're actively looking? You should have been registered at the? Uh, there you go. It is paid at a weekly rate of 50% of the unemployed worker's average weekly insurable income. It is paid so long as unemployment continues to a maximum period of 13 weeks within a 52-week period period. That's not long. It is not paid to self-employed persons, voluntarily insured persons, summer students, or persons who are partially employed, that is, on reduced work days. To qualify, you must be younger than 65. At the day your unemployment begins, you must have been able to satisfy three conditions. 
52 contributions into the NIB program since 1974. Must have paid 13 contributions in the 26 weeks before. Is sound familiar? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sound like maternity. Mm -hmm. And contributions, seven contributions in the 13 weeks immediately before the week in which you were last employed. Must be able to satisfy the Department of Labor's conditions for registration. Right here. Know that there is a three day waiting period from last day of work before the benefit will begin. So, something like when you're sick, mm -hmm. it starts on the third day. You got rich from NIBA when you got your son. Mm -hmm. Me? Mm -hmm. You got as well? Got rich. I ain't paying no money. <laughs> she got 4 95 plus weekly. Mm -hmm. Notice. Payment of the benefit will stop. Notice now, unemployment benefit. Notice, payment of the benefit will stop if you move outside of the Bahamas during the benefit period. Fail to be available and looking for work during the benefit period. Move outside. How could you go on vacation? You unemployed. Don't All right. Hey, refuse. Suitable employment. Mm. Huh? No. Okay. And became employed or self-employed. So you can't be getting unemployment benefit and you said enclosed from the back of your car. Because mm -hmm. you are self-employed mm -hmm. and you're making an income. So what do you mean by this refused suitable <laughs> employment? They oh, offer you a job. If the department of call you and yeah, tell you so somebody will pay two hundred fifty a week, and you say no. Exactly. You can't get no more money. So let's that. say you were an engineer, and and the company you're working with came insolvent, so you're unemployed. You register the labor exchange, and they call you and say we have a job for you to do plumbing, because then your engineering was, I guess you know how to do plumbing, mm -hmm. and you say you don't want it, that's below you. Well, your yeah. benefits will stop. Mm -hmm. Really. Yes, it's it right here. But it's only when um, refuse to let employment. That's why people don't go and register with the department. <laughs> but then if you don't register, so you can't get yeah. it. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's what I'm telling you. That. <laughs> it's right here. Yeah. That's one of the requirements. Why must you have to register? So that's only kind of with the Department of Labor. Because if, if somebody in the private sector called me and I refuse it, but they wouldn't know. They wouldn't know. Yes, no, they wouldn't know. No, that's you tell them. It's the Department of Labor. Yeah. Okay, jeepney drivers. You plenty of them on the road. Yeah. Not a set you could advise. I'm so bad. Oh, because they're all rushing to make a dollar. Yeah, just a dollar. Well, dollar twenty-five. It's crazy. If you are a jeepney driver who is a franchise owner. And the owner of the bus that you drive, you are self-employed in Class B. You are required to pay contributions at a rate of 8.8% of your insurable income, which ranges from $1 to $400 per week. And you are also eligible for industrial benefits. If you are a jetty driver, leasing the franchise or plate, but owns the bus that you drive, you are self-employed in Class A. You know what is missing from here? Taxi drivers. Because they have a lot of them in the same category. Yes. They own the franchise or they lease, lease. the place. The yeah. But, but I don't think they, they, they say you're they supposed so to do that. I'm like, don't care. Please. Please. <laughs> I mean, I know they're doing it, right? But what do you mean they're they doing it? I know they're doing it, but I thought that's it's not right. Doing it. I, still doing it. I know they're still doing it, but I thought it's not right. So my thing is, this chicken is a taxi. As a party, yeah, I'm confident you're talking about things where they supposed to be done. Yes. Oh, that's why it's not here then, because it's not legal. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. For the taxi drivers. It's not legal. Also, it's legal. legal. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I but thought it was illegal for both. No. no. Oh, okay. No. Okay. 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 I thought it was illegal mm -hmm. for both. No, no. Oh. You're not supposed to leave. I didn't realize that you couldn't, that that was not legal. Leave your, leave so yeah. why is that still going on? Because I mean, that could be stopped immediately. They know who's these late. They know. They're done by political favors. Definitely. <laughs> you will apply for see if you'll get one. Oh, I, yeah, okay. I know. All right. But an, a, another thing I think I need to mention to the powers that be with the taxi service. I just traveled. 
and there were no taxis and no country men in that look like this. No. They're too old. Yeah. The, I don't know what incentive they give the taxi drivers. Mm -hmm. But, and they're all the same color. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So nobody could say, well, I went in a blue car because that's not one of the colors for a taxi. And the models are all practically the same. Right. 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 All regular cars, mm -hmm. except for the wagon type. For like, mm -hmm. for, like four persons. Mm -hmm. Other than that, all cars are clean. Right. Yeah. 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 And ain't nobody walking around like I see some is be to the Hilton. Yeah. Walk this way, right? Toes hanging out. Face from the bed. Floral shape. Watch my movement now. Be <laughs> serious. I mean, I understand it's a business. But it's more than that. Yeah. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, like when you go to those countries in the airport, I mean, those cars are lined off. They're all mm -hmm. one color. Mm -hmm. All clean. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they have a stand you go to. So, you yeah. want a taxi person? Yeah, yeah, I mean, we have, we have the stand yeah, yeah. here too. Oh, we do? <laughs> we do? Yeah, we most hotels and stuff, they have this taxi stand and they, they have a, a system. Oh, for the hotel. Yeah. Yeah. The airport too yeah. yeah. has the same thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, it's there. It's there. Yeah, they it's there. Like, they they bump, bump, bump. Bump. No, you can't jump. You can't so jump the line. Like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Line. But my problem is there's a standard. Yes. And we don't have, we don't have that standard. And we need that standard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know what the bus drivers say. They, they try. Cause they, I don't know if they still do it. Like something about Bamba or something. Yeah. yeah, that's required. Yeah. That's required, yeah. The taxi, the, 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 and taxi drivers, they have to do it too. You can't be on the road. Because it's only a money-making business. But so sad. It's cut off. They even deliver bad customer service because they try to make a dollar. Mm -hmm. yeah. They don't even go to full road. Yeah. They try to get off yeah. the yeah. They go about the town. Yeah. No, and they have argument for a tourist. Yeah. Often you see them. Yeah. Yeah. Always. Yeah. 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 Real and you'll find out too with taxi cab drivers when you collect the tourists, the tourists always want to know what's the political flavor. They want to know who's to who's who, what's happening. Mm -hmm. Where can I go? Mm -hmm. Who are the movers and shakers in society? Mm -hmm. That's what they get when they drop in the car. That's what they mm -hmm. want to know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't want to hear about where the pirate museum is. They don't want to know. <laughs> they want to know who are the movers and shakers in this country. Mm -hmm. Who name am I supposed to know? Who, who name am I supposed to know? Who name can I drop? Where can I go to see these people? Because this is a small island. So listen to what it says here. What if I refuse to pay? Payment of NI, national insurance contribution, is not an option. It's the law. <laughs> if you are a self-employed person and you fail to pay, or if you are an employer and you fail to pay for your employees, or you fail to provide information on an employee's wage status, or you victimize an employee who cooperates with national insurance, then you will be subject to penalties of a, for a minimum of six months in jail, or fine of $1,000 or both, or maximum of 12 months in jail, or fine of 2500 or both. Mm -hmm. So if you notice on the jitneys now when I pass, like a lot of young boys are now driving the jitneys. Mm -hmm. So I mean a lot of the older persons have hired young people to drive their buses. Mm. What you should do and must pay, it's the law. But even if it weren't, the paying of national insurance contributions <coughs> is one of the most important things you can do as a worker to protect your family financial future. In fact, no other financial institution in this country gives you the financial protection that the National Insurance Board guarantees. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly, and no comment. 2020? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> huh? <laughs> mm -hmm. So they give you some examples. I tell you how you benefit. You can get sickness benefit invalidity benefit, maternity benefit. I've seen a female bus driver, retirement benefit, funeral benefit, survival benefit, industrial benefit. Yeah, I've seen one. Yeah, yeah. the lady, right? Elderly lady.
Yeah. All right, so let's look at the last two. Survivor's benefit and funeral benefit. Funeral benefit is a one-time payment of seventeen twenty. Mm -hmm. Ask your contact with that better. That is paid to the person who has paid or is liable to pay the funeral expenses of a deceased insured person. How much it cost to cremate? Three thousand. Three thousand, right? That's what mm -hmm. I'm saying. Like this benefit should be at oh. least enough to for the person to get cremated. Well, you might not have that. You might not have. Hold on, there's a condition you don't get this automatically. Oh, wow. okay. It says the insured person must have paid at least 50 contributions during his lifetime. And these contributions may have been paid by the deceased person or by the spouse, whether alive or dead, of the uninsured deceased individual. To claim funeral benefit, you must produce a death certificate. And the estimate of the cost or the receipt of the funeral expenses from the funeral director. Other documents may be needed, such as a marriage certificate, if the claim is being made. Note that funeral benefit will not be paid in respect of presumed death of a person who has disappeared, unless and until the state makes a declaration of death. So in addition to taking the people's insurance money and spending it, you have to pay an ID back. You must submit a claim for funeral benefit on the form, B51, within six months of the date of death of the person in respect of whom benefit is payable, and funeral benefit may not be paid if the claim is made more than six months after the date of the death of the deceased. So in most instances, the spouse comes as soon as she gets the death certificate. Mm -hmm. So yes. a question, when it says that the, the contributions may have been paid by the deceased person or by the spouse, by the spouse for the deceased person? Mm -hmm. Oh, so then the spouse paying his own. Like a man whose wife, you know, wife doesn't work. He could get funeral benefits for his wife because he's paid for him. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. okay. And then you also get the survivor's benefit. Mm -hmm. Survivor's benefit is paid to the surviving dependents and the following priority order. Widow or widower children under the age of 16 or 21 if you're still in school, unmarried orphans under the age of 16, 21 if still in school, unmarried children who are not children of the deceased but who are dependent on him, and then the parents. The condition must have paid at least 150 contributions in the national insurance since the program began. Two questions. So mm -hmm. let's say the person has like 10 children and parents and all of that, they could, um, No, the priority. Uh, Just okay. like how under the Inheritance Act, there's a priority when mm -hmm. you die without a bill. There's a priority. So if you have 20 children, all of them could possibly... Up to 10. Age. It's uh, say up to 10. Uh -huh. okay. If you get up to 10, depending uh -huh. on children, to uh -huh. receive it. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. 10 children, you need 10 children, all of them get more. Okay. <laughs> and that might be the and you know, so how much you contribute there? It's okay. 150 contributions. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then they yeah, say a widow who doesn't qualify for survivor's benefit mm -hmm. can now qualify for a one time survivor's grant. So, where there is a widow or widower who qualifies for benefit, only five dependent children may qualify for payment at the same time. So you're, I mean, you're, you're only get married, the 10 children if you're not a widow. Uh, must be. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, it's a lot of you weren't married then. Mm -hmm. Serious stuff. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my mother wasn't qualified because she needs too much money. Yeah, uh-huh. That's another thing you have to look yeah. at. 
Oh yeah, that happens. Now I'm gonna spend you on that today. No, it's only in town. Did you tell them that happens to the government school? So instead of making the money. Yeah. All right. So let's take two scenarios. Oh, breathe not again. <laughs> <It's> depressing. <laughs> Every class I have, that's the word that comes up when I start the section. They use that same word. Depressing. I don't know why. I mean, you think it's bad, but then you don't realize it's so bad. This is the section they gave me. I should have done another section, but you all are always happy. The students always sad when I do this part. I need a mock up. Yeah, yeah. Actually, this is a session where I'm happy. You are? Yes, interesting. All right, so I need two people. You have to advise either someone between the age of 35 to 45 and someone to 60 onwards. We're going to do a financial planning. So you're going to look at what their income and expenses should be. What would you advise them to do? I need to get another mark. Yeah. Go there. And hold on, let me get another mark up. Need someone to advise someone over the age of 60. You do the young person? Sure. Do the young person. Where the rock I give you? Go start writing. Who's going to do the So who, who do you want to get? Old person. Who want to advise the old person? You? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who else? Come on, let's go. Let's go. All right, income. What assets would they have between the ages of 35 and 45? I don't know. Some people might have a mutual fund at that age. House. Yeah, they can have a home if they marry and have kids. Okay. Hmm? We have some people in this class age, you know. You agree? Mm -hmm. We have some people in that age. 35 to 45. 60 plus 2. <laughs> yeah, that's <go ahead. laughs> Sixty plus. You want to ask if they have life insurance. Uh, yeah, life insurance. He ready asks if they have pension and money in the bank. What assets they have? Life insurance. But don't forget, annuity is different from a life insurance. Health insurance, dental insurance. A will. Uh huh. A will. Or trust. Here you need to ask if they have a spouse. 
And in some instances, when you reach age of 60, some people have a child. A dependent, right. Who's a college, dependent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. dependent. Not, uh, maybe in college, or maybe one of those who have some mental disability mm -hmm. that's going to stay with them for the rest of their life. Or so you need them grand um, children who people with Dependent. No, but what I'm finding here too is, uh, <laughs> I know guys <laughs> my age, uh -huh. uh -huh. still having children. Oh, oh yeah. Bad. You see, so uh -huh. say children now. But age. children, yeah. Not as grandpa. Why come you get stuck on the young people? <laughs> You'll be a stuck on the young people. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what else. <laughs> Income, expenses, any assets, they may have some businesses, any dependents. Uh -huh. uh, college age, are they still in school? The bucket list? What bucket list? <laughs> the bucket list. Some of kind of bucket list. There's some things they may want to do. You may have to tell them yes or no to some of those things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they may want to go bungee jumping or whatever. Yeah, you gotta make sure they have all these things in place. Okay. <laughs> okay. Check on your national insurance benefits. <laughs> Hey, he's having some challenges over here for the 35 year old. Pension, Pension, Yeah. Okay, you put future investment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He has post retirement plans. <laughs> what is this? You put your spiritual <laughs> life? It <laughs> <laughs> makes a difference. It <laughs> will make a difference. <laughs> your physical health can be tied to your mental health. <laughs> You know, one of the things when you hit this age here, you have to ask yourself, how much money do you think you need for retirement mm -hmm. at the age of 60? When you look at the age of your parents or your relatives, you may say, I'm retiring at 65 or 70. But my family on average live about 20 years. So you have to ask yourself, what do I need? Then you have to look at the house you're living in. Should I stay there, like we said, or bring family members in, or should I downscale? Or maybe me and my brothers them should share one place and split the split the money or the cost. All those concept decisions have to be made. Yeah, because in the state they have like reverse mortgages, but we want that over here. No. No, but you can be looking for oh, children to help your that's parents. That's that's like the lady told me in the, in, in the bank, when she was crying and the bank was taking away her house. Mm -hmm. She said her son told her, I'll, I didn't I'll, tell I'll you to send me it. Parents too. Sometimes the children is still be trying to catch shit. Um, that's why people yeah. are selfish too. Because they want to be able to help Mortgage for your for your yeah. college, you really should. Because I mean, I mean, when I took when I came home, I just took over the mortgage. No, but mm -hmm. everybody don't do that. Yeah, yeah. I took yeah. over the mortgage. Don't do that. I knew yeah. that's what they did, so mm -hmm. I went. Yeah, I, I did people, the payments. Like I know. When I was working at what is plans? What do you mean plans here? What plans do they have? Yeah. Yeah. They may have some plans. What kind of plans do they have? You go off to school and you don't okay. come back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you left on the parents. The parents they may have some plans that could be right. outside so of their... Doing, parents sometimes okay. Um, okay. So here parents. you have... You have so you what's sure in their bank, what's in the bank, pension plan, plan. and what, is, what yeah. investment do they have? Okay. Some people have investments. So then the child came back like, some investment. Yeah, yeah. So something like two and a half years, yeah. yeah. So that's long before the last couple of years. Right there. Mm -hmm. That's not fair. 
Okay. That's the way you can find out what the assets are. Then you ask, then you ask them. And you start with something else too. What are your expenses? I got that over here. Okay. What are your monthly expenses? Monthly costs. Okay, monthly costs. So your income, your expenses. <laughs> I'm also asking about income. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's also income. Mm -hmm. Beyond? Beyond that, yeah. Exactly. Maybe something they do on the side that they do mm -hmm. part-time mm -hmm. that will not be um, affected by N NIB. Yeah. What else you have there? So this is, this is another expense. Life insurance is there. If you think about the cost of that. It's the health status. Are they prepared for death? How are you going to take care of your spouse? Mm -hmm. Out of all of these things here, how are you going to take care of your spouse? Because that's a serious question. Well, what does she have as well? Does she? What is her situation? Yeah. If she was a housewife, then you have to make sure that you have her covered to maintain herself after you pass or you get sick. What if you become incapacitated? You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Some people become incapacitated. What if you had a two-story house and all the bedrooms on the top floor? You have to retrofit your whole house. How are you going to pay for it? And there were no bedrooms at the bottom. All the bedrooms at the top. That's another issue. A lot of people like to do that. When they hit retirement, they build two-story house and buy a Mercedes. When you hit, when you go into retire, yeah, they buy a bigger home. They buy a bigger home rather than getting something smaller. Why get a bigger home? I have arrived. No, but everybody's one that mm. big, grand, and retirement pool for some okay. reason. Yeah. <laughs> That's no one's going to be able to do Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Because here, too, this thing that what you're saying now, this here, you have to think about this, too, when you look at all of this here. Because if you were to get sick and you need a caretaker and a physiotherapist and pay doctor bills, will this be able to cover it? Because mm -hmm. they're finding out now that a lot of people, after they retire and they get in this state, they don't have sufficient money mm -hmm. to take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. so the much that, 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 that might be your savings yeah. in less than a year. Uh -huh. yeah. oh, Especially yes. after you retire because you already lose that insurance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So success could actually work. Even when you plan very well and you had the money and stuff. Yeah. That so something like this depends. You can actually do a checklist, mm -hmm. the questions you could ask someone, and then you could develop a plan as to how you would advise them. In terms of quality of life, mm -hmm. how does their life after retirement work with how their life was before retirement? Yeah. Do they Cause plan to realistically continue? Because some people can't adjust. Exactly. When they retire. And yeah, that's what the clans thing was up about as well, you see? What mm -hmm. did they make any Yeah, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. Okay, I see you getting all pretty here. What is this? <laughs> it's all my categories to discuss. Dependence, what's your, what's your income, what's your expenses, you have any debts, what your lifestyle is, you have any assets, any business, any uh, home, any type of funds, in terms of a uh, mutual fund, and Louise, blah, blah, blah. Do um, you have any dependents, the age of college, they sit in school, the infant, what about what your spouse? What's her income? How that correlates with your assets and expenses? Uh -huh. You have insurance um, for health, life, all the other things. You have any post retirement plans? Any future investment plans? Do you have a pension for your retirement? Do you have any trusts? Any will? The part you possibly set up? How are your parents? Um, are you taking care of your parents, other family members? Uh -huh. um, you know you're young, you have any risks, any type of financial risks, you might have a big debt or something, you might have some health risks and like what ETC. School loans. School loans. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. yeah, we, we gotta make sure. Yeah. yeah that's no, that's yeah. dependent. Some some people have school loans. Oh they're yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. They're in it's school themselves. Yeah. You could also ask them here if they're willing to start up their own business. I think about starting their own business. That's another avenue you can go into. You know, are they looking into starting their own business? Future investment plans, yeah. So that can go in many different directions.
So that could be on business, that could be getting more equity in stocks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another question you get asked is do they have plans to, to emigrate to another country? Ah. Yes. Ooh. These people here may decide that they want to live on the family island. Or they may decide that, guess what, I've been here a long time, but my children live in Canada. I want to go to Canada. People yes, they do. <laughs> the Hamans now yes, are going do. to the States because their kids went to college, didn't come back. Exactly, that's what I mean. And as they get older, they want to go there. The parents right. the children. So that's what I'm saying here. That's another them. question you have to ask them. Are you remaining in the Bahamas or are you emigrating to another country? Here you're going to ask if they're going to relocate because of jobs. And a lot of behemoths, what they're doing now is, before, when the children are in high school, they've already started to apply to other countries to emigrate. Before the children leave to go to school. So when the children go to school, yes, they, they go with them. They leave the country. If they decide that their children are going to go to school in Canada, then they apply to go to Canada now to study and they bring their children with them, and then they stay. Yeah, so they could get on benefits for the child and start school and all of that. All of that, yeah. Well, they say to get sick, Karen's going to pay to get sick. <laughs> yeah, because they will pay for everything. Yeah, 100%. Uh -huh. Yeah. Tax you Yeah. They tax. Yeah, they tax. And then I think they say that their health care system is a long wait, I think. They say mm -hmm. because yeah, because everything is paid for. Mm -hmm. So this is, these are the things you have to look at. Now, bear in mind, in both instances, the cost of living is going up. Mm -hmm. And that's what you have to look at. So if, say, if here and, and here you were saving $1,000 or 500 or 750 when you get here, it can't be the same thing. So it can't be less. No, it can't be less. Be you won't survive. Oh, yeah. You have to go up. No, it depends. Life happens. Mm -hmm. All these things in here. Life happens. And then you decide to get married and you want to have a big <laughs> splurge. And then your wife had a baby. <sighs> and then you decide it's sixty? No, no, over here, over here. 25. Just checking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At 60, some people At do 60, that too. Why does have babies? We just finished discussing that. No, no, no. 60 year old Mario, 25 year old. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. So he, A, he is at this age, and he have to add all of this in him. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Young wife, young children. That's right. Starting over again. Mm -hmm. That's what he do. $10. And before, when he was here, if he still had his old wife, they could be sharing the same old car. <laughs> but he'd have to go buy a new car. Mm -hmm. And he may have to get rid of the house he has now and get a new house. Mm -hmm. At 60. At 60. Jesus. <laughs> yes. It's called love. Okay. Okay. She might be in charge of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So th these are the kind of things you have to think about in terms of how to advise a client. Even the idea of final plans, it might seem premature and stuff. But you no, you can do that because right here, he could buy his plot. Yeah. Yeah. You buy your plot here. Mm -hmm. And in here, you could pay for your casket mm -hmm. in advance. Mm -hmm. So you could get a casket for 30000 And write down rough plans in terms of what your final yeah. intentions uh -huh. are. And you could start paying on it. So that you would already have your plot, whether it's a, 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 du a duplex one or a quadruple one. And over here, you pay for your casket. So all of that has gotten rid of. I think I want my office spread in the ocean. You write that, yeah, write you write that, that in your bill. Oh, but that means you want to be cremated. Possibly. You right. You cremate half of me and then up to so the service for the double. double. <laughs> what? <laughs> so a double car for me and the, oh and the new God. wife, right? What? Double. But then you'll have to go get a new one. That's what I'm saying. This is the young wife. Yeah. I got her name on a tombstone too. So yeah. the new wife. She, she, want she, <laughs> she might not want that. She only want the money. She might want the double plug. She might be in there. She only wants the money. Where you going? Money. She might be in there before me. True, true, true. She only wants the money. All right. 
So next week we're going to look at more into the area of private wealth management. Yes. Okay? It's for people who really have money. Sounds good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Do you think it'll take a finger for, for the young people? You <laughs> feel <laughs> 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 that one now. You have insurance. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think you have it there. Trust, Trust parents. parents. Yeah. Oh, emergency funding. You got any savings? Yeah. Savings for emergencies? Yeah. So this is good information for you, planners. Mm -hmm. All right. So what was the idea behind the spiritual life? <laughs> <laughs> no. What your doctor at some point will tell you is kind of where your head and where your heart is. Mm -hmm. It's going to probably affect your health as well. Okay. There's another one I have. I need to make some more copies. Do you have seven hundred fifty thousand dollars for nursing here? Ooh. Yeah, it's a lot. Make some more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a cost. Monthly. Monthly. Well, people with dementia. Mm. Yes. Seven hundred thirty thousand. They normally live until their full retirement age, you know. Yeah. Right to the end. Whatever's natural. <laughs> Another thing you can add here is not just whether you have a spouse. But you need to prepare for the death of a spouse. Yeah, we did. We didn't write it yet. <laughs> On both sides. Prepare for the death of a spouse. I'm not sure what happened with it. When, when he fought that many years ago, mm -hmm. when he was buried in, where's that place? On Soldier Road. Uh-huh. Audrey. 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 No, 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 no. On, on, on. Uh, oh, oh, I know you mean. West, um, Madon. Oh, yeah. Madon. Yeah. yeah. They put his then wife's name on the same panel that his name was. Mm -hmm. And she lived like 20 or so years after him. Mm -hmm. And she got very addictive. Exactly. Why? She didn't want to go there. Well, she didn't want to go there. Yeah. Or somebody might have to put somebody else there. Yeah, but, but they had a name. They put her name. And I thought that was very strange because, I mean, she wouldn't have been 50, no one there 50 at the time. I mean, but that's three, four, five. Some people do that. I've seen people put their names but they put on their spouses. Yeah, they put their names. Yeah. They don't put yes. the name, their names. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The day that yes. the, um, yeah, they were born, the dash, yeah. and they leave it blank. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. yeah. I've seen that. Yeah. You say that. I'll be like, you're calling something on me. Yeah. <laughs> My mother-in-law's name is now. My father-in-law passed a couple years ago. Oh, wow. name is there. Mm -hmm. I guess they already paid for for the plane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess they paid for it. They're trying to make sure. Put all the money in the ground. Exactly. <laughs> so you change the note. Why put the money in the ground? 
Just have to apply yourself, mm -hmm. and you could become a advisor to a lot of people. Two more headaches. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Say headaches. <laughs> 